Here and Now, the program featuring the news and interests of the African-American community. Your host, Sandra Bookman. Good afternoon, everyone. Coming up on Here and Now, we're going to introduce you to Erica Reed, author of a new book, The Thriving Child. It offers solutions to help manage children's allergies, as well as some advice on healthy eating habits. Erica, who's also the wife of famed record executive Antonio L.A. Reed, will share some of the radical changes that her family has made. And later, the popular teen group Mindless Behavior that has girls screaming wherever they go. They're here to talk about their instant music careers and latest video, Hello. When I first saw you, all I could say, how do I Plus, the New York Jazz Initiative, how the educational program is keeping kids on beat and keeping jazz alive. But first up, in just a moment, we'll meet the author of the controversial book, Beating Black Kids. Asada Kirkland says that no parent should ever spank their child. So we asked some New Yorkers how they feel about spankings. I think it's not right because they're not going to get anything out of it. They're still going to do the same thing over. doesn't make sense hitting them. I think it's okay as long as you don't abuse them. I don't think uh, spanking should harm them. Um, I am actually against it because they feel like it's, um, I think it's the parents admitting that they don't have any other tool in their toolbox. Yes, it goes both ways. Okay. When you could not reason with them, you know. It's like when you, like a baby, and you can say, no, don't do that. You know, and sometimes some children doesn't listen, and you go, dip, 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 and they listen. I disagree. <laughs> I disagree. I think if you want to teach a kid how to be nonviolent, you should start at home by not hitting them. Making on the form of this, I just think it's unnecessary now because our kids are so much more evolved. They're so much smarter. They take things in totally different than, you know, years ago. So I think that it's just totally unnecessary. I feel that it's needed to a certain point. Well, you know, I'm like this. I'm old fashioned. And I believe, you know, you just can't let a child do anything that they want to do. I also believe what the word of God says, spare the rod and spoil the child. This is why today's society is what it is, because you let your children get away with it. I don't think it should be severe. Like, they shouldn't overdo it. When we come back, we'll meet the author of Beating Black Kids. She says parents who hit aren't helping their children. Asada Kirkland, the author of Beating Black Kids, has spent the last 15 years working with children, most of that time teaching. But now she's working as a consultant, and she also conducts parenting workshops. She is, of course, also a mom. Thank you so much, Asada, for being here. Thank you so much, This Sandra. is the book, Beating Black Kids. Definitely. That title really gets people talking. Exactly. What inspired you to write it, and why was, do you feel like it was a subject that needed to be addressed? Definitely. Uh, what happened was I had a stroke and was out of commission for like two months and people had to watch my daughter. And they did a good job, but the issue about how you discipline children came up because she was under another person's care. And in that conversation I found that um, the belief was that you can still hit the child even though this person was a progressive person. And I said to myself, okay, I didn't know that still existed in people's <laughs> minds and woke up the next day with the idea you got to write a book and went out when I returned to work like two months after there was a maintenance man cook and an administrator at the table and I told them what the title of the book would be and they went on for three hours with stories of their own about this experience and I saw oh my god I have to address this and I wrote the book because we're purging, like we really need to handle the issue. Why do you think spanking is such a, 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 you know, a controversial topic, especially among black people? I mean, honestly, I was spanked. Most of my friends sure. will tell you they were spanked, uh, and some of them will say they were beaten. I may have been beaten. Sure. Um, why do you think that it's something that persists and that people have such a wide-ranging uh, opinion about it? You know, for us as a people, and people ask a lot of times, well, why does the book say beating black kids? Mm -hmm. Everyone gets beat. But in our culture, we act like it's a cultural norm, like this is what you're supposed to do. I don't think there's a black comedian out that doesn't laugh about the issue of how we've been beat. But it clearly comes from being slaves in America. And for people to say, oh, I'm not an African American, okay, colonialism. It all stems from being beat 
and disciplined with violence and then we internalize it. You hear people back in the day say, well, I had to beat him so master wouldn't get him. And today's correlation is, well, I have to beat him or the police will get him. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. So it's a derivative of that experience. And your claim in this book, you say point blank that that is not a tradition that should be passed down. There are better ways to deal with children. Oh, definitely. I mean, we can look at how we interact with each other as adults. And when we have differences, we don't just start up and fight each other. No, we communicate and we look at each other's viewpoints, and we can do the same thing with children, but the first step is to value what a child has to say. And that's where you get that uh, children should be seen and not heard mentality, and it creates this chasm between adults and children where you really don't get what they're experiencing, how they're feeling, and when you strike, that's the memory you're leaving in our children. So we just have to deal with that because our children have the memories of violence from the people that love them. and they're not equipped to handle things in the world well. And, and you have children of your own. I sure do. Yeah, a child. You have I have a daughter. child. Her name is Patience. Have you ever spanked Patience? Absolutely never. Patience can honestly look at the objects on the front of my book and say, what are those? Like, she has never been hit because I feel like I'm her biggest fan, literally. And she's not babied, but I admire her so much. I would never have her have the memory of me hitting her because I need her to trust me as a parent. So you don't trust people that hit you, believe me. So my thing is to just foster growth in her and help her see guidelines and do well in the world and give her good things that make her feel good. In fact, one of the things in the book is you assert that, that spanking does foster, that violence does foster other issues in the child, among them loss of trust. Sure, definitely. Well, when you hit a child, you are teaching a lesson. And when they go out in the world and try to get things that they want and let's say are denied those things, they use what was used at home. They use the violence because instead of the violence, you, we could have been using negotiation skills. How do you teach a kid how to negotiate? Well, what do you say to a parent that says, I am not negotiating with a five-year-old? Right. And I tell them, well, you better be ready for the result of that because what you're doing is you're making this child, you're not preparing them for the skill that they need to negotiate. And I'm talking about even negotiate a salary. So what do you think the result, what, what, what's your assertion that the result will be of, of a parent that says, no, I'm gonna spank her bottom, I'm not negotiating with her, and that's the way I'm handling it. What, what is it you believe the parent will likely see down the road? Down the road, you just, it, it manifests in a lot of different ways because every child is different. But you get a child who may not express everything they want to express out of fear they feel like they can't trust the person across from them who you want, the parents should be who they trust first. But you get a child who doesn't know how to express themselves fully. And I'm not saying, this is not theory, this is, this is actuality. I've had, I had a grown man, he had to be about 6'5", talk about his fear of speaking in front of people because when he was little, the way he would get spanked, whipped, pop, whatever you wanna call it, it's all the same thing, it made him go in, so he became he introverted. He yeah, and now as a big grown man, he doesn't have the confidence to speak up. Yeah, um, do you think that happens, that you see some of that in school fighting? Um, when kids well, are fighting at school, they're expressing them, they're, they're doing at school what's been done to them. Well, it's and that's the, the only way they need to, way to communicate. It's the communication they know. You know, it's really not a big thought around, oh, this is all I know, but it's, they don't know anything else. So when you want something and you can't get it, you strike out. Or if you don't want to hear it, you strike out. It, it, it is what, it's the lesson we teach, as opposed to teaching something that is empowering or some other skill that really boosts their self-esteem. And I tell adults, if you have to hit a child to discipline them, then you need to get your skills up. One of the other things that I liked about the book is you talk to experts, you hear from experts in sure. handling situations. You also hear people's stories about how they were spanked. And then I, what I found just really interesting, this list of objects of things that people have been beaten with. Sure. Why include that? I mean, I have to put these glasses on Please and read do. some of those, uh, these things to you. Hands, feet, vacuum cleaner cords, spatula, hot spatula, wire hangers, shoes, trophies, telephone, uh, Hot Wheels track. Why include this list in the book? You know, as I interviewed people for the book, they voluntarily told me the things that they were beat with. And I still get people telling me, you forgot to put the clog shoe. You forgot to put, uh, and they, I could do one book on just objects alone, but I wanted the chapter to be just a list because I don't have much to say about it. Because when you read that list, it is, 
outrageous that we hit our children with those things and that we've adopted the habit of hitting the people we love with these particular objects. So I put it in there like that because I needed to really hit home. When you see trophies and a phone, and can you imagine being hit with a phone or hit with a big metal trophy, things like that? We have to get that together because we're leaving marks in our children. Now, you, we said before that uh, people have questioned why you said beating black kids specifically yeah. on the topic. You're African American, mm -hmm. so in part I could understand you're wanting to speak to, sure. to your people. But is it, do you feel, a bigger issue among black people, people of color, than others? It's a bigger issue for black people primarily because we use it as sort of our shield. Um, we want our kids to fear us. It's, it's sort of like not having power in the real world. We exert power over our children. And other races don't really have that phenomenon. I don't care where they come from. They may not speak English, but they will open up a restaurant or open up a newsstand or whatever, and they have these different systems in place that build the family up but we don't have that in place. So when people say to you, well, I got beaten, I got spanked as a child, and I turned out okay. Yeah, they say that, and I say, mm, no, you didn't. And I often say, well, we're products of lynching also, and that doesn't, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. You understand, violence doesn't, it didn't create anything good in us. It left a lot of bad memories in us, and I can talk to several adults today that talk about how getting hit by their parents or aunts affected them or their inability as adults. So you have a, a parental code of ethics yes. um, that you suggest to parenting. It's a, a, a list of things and one of them in particular is that people need to find essentially a, another way of, of discipline, another discipline solution. Sure. Um, what are some of those other ways? You said negotiate with the child. Right. I think one of the biggest things is to be engaged. And if you don't know what the word, look, if they don't know what the word, look that up, please, because that's very important. If you're engaged with a child, like if he's playing video games all day and you have a complaint about that, my question would be, well, have you played yet? What, what level are you on? You know, a lot of my students will say, Miss Kay, do you have Facebook? And I go, I have more friends than you, my dear. And it's, a, it's sort of like you get in their world and you become interesting. I think one of the biggest problems is that a lot of adults are boring. And we need to kind of look back to when we were children were the adults interesting? No, they're just like adults. So you have to get in their world a little bit and get engaged and really get them interested in what you have to say or else you will sound like the Charlie Brown teacher, womp, 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 you know, just boring everybody to death. But it sounds to me what, what you're really hoping to do here is, not, is to get people to think but to also get them to have a conversation about this issue. You, you've, I think, have some ads uh, mm -hmm. in Harlem right. uh, essentially calling people's attention to the issue. Definitely. Um, there are trash cans that line Harlem in different places, and I chose to get the book publicized on those trash cans because it's 24 hours. It's unconventional. It um, makes people say, what is that? And I have taped people's reactions to those trash cans, and I just want it to be in the, in the middle of the black community so they can really see it and feel it and talk about it. And I, and I want us to go beyond talking about it, but to implement what's in the book because that is, it's a book where things can be implemented. And I put those little, key, I put little keys next to every solution so that people can actually see, and it's not really like a, a doing this, like put them in the corner, never that. But one of the points I love on the Parental Code of Ethics is I will only seek excellence in my child if I am excellent myself. That to That's, me just says it all. Like stop wanting things in them if you are not exemplary. Of those things. That does sound like words to parent by. I love it. Asada Kirkland, thank you so much for being with us. The book thank is you. eminently readable. I did mark pages, and <laughs> I am planning to send a copy of this to my mother. I love it. Thank okay. you. It's never too late. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Next on here now, author Erica Reed talks about her family's journey from unhealthy to healthy. Stay with us. Most people agree that parenting is one of the toughest jobs around, and the task becomes really challenging when allergies and asthma are involved. This afternoon, Erica Reed, a devoted mother and author and wife of music mogul Antonio L.A. Reed, is here with us. She's going to talk about her new book, The Thriving Child. Thank you, Erica, for being with us this Thank afternoon. You. Thank you for having me. Now, I am not a mother, so I was curious as to how I would find the information in the book, and I have to tell you, Loved it. Absolutely loved oh, it. Thank you. I felt as if you were talking to me about what happened to you, not preaching to me. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide that you had all this great information and it was so good you needed to put it in a book? 
stay-at-home mom, just a mom, truly devoted to my job, my blessing that I asked for. And on this journey of trying to do better for my children and get them to a place where they could thrive in this world, I realized all this information that I was getting along the way. And I said, you know what? There's no way I could be the only mom out there that feels clueless, feels alone, that needs all this information. And I said, I have so much from the journey that I've been on. I need to share it. So I wanted to share it and help. And that was it. Now, we should tell folks, uh, your kids have quite a few allergies, mm -hmm. which is turns out is commonplace these days. Absolutely. And you sort of found all this information out by trial and error. Trial and error. And that's really honestly what it is. It's really following your intuition. My intuition has been my guide. I've been to see so many doctors. I know what it's like to go in appointment after appointment and be referred to another doctor. But it was honestly trial and error. You sit there and I'm giving my son an egg and his lips are not swelling up. His, you know, I, I don't see any of that going on, but he starts to snore. And I said, he's probably sensitive or allergic to egg. And I ended up having him tested, and he's allergic to the white part of the egg, not the yolk of the egg. Something you would not have known, had you? Never even thought to separate the egg. <laughs> you, t you took it a step farther. Yeah. Because you've changed the way your family eats, the way you clean mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. How is that possible? Because to, to be able to do and... It's very possible, it's very simple. When you're on a mission and you want better health for yourself and your children, you will do what you need to do. You are not going to let what it takes to do get in the way. You're really honestly going to do what needs to be done. And so with my daughter, she had a horrible skin rash on her face, under her chin. Constantly, over and over again, I was told she needs a topical steroid cream to put on. Mm -hmm. It did take it away, but it also came back because we never addressed the root of the problem. And so what I decided to do was to take matters in my own home and look at where she was spending the majority of her time, which was in her room, sleeping at night. She would wake up from bleeding profusely at night. So I said, it's got to be something in the room. Mm -hmm. So I started changing the detergent. You know, here it is. We grew up thinking our children needed to have their clothes washed and something that smelled good and mm -hmm. felt a certain way and you know it was just different and I said I have to take another approach what worked for us then and what my mother did is not working for me nor my children so I just made little simple baby steps and it's made a world of a difference and I you know I have to sometimes I, I was teasing you earlier I said what do you eat <laughs> um, but you do you have some recipes in this book yes. um, fairly simple straightforward and fabulous tasting you're telling me they are did friends tell you you were crazy when you started changing everything that your Absolutely. family's diet and Absolutely. My mother thought I was beyond crazy because she said, your kids need good food. This is flavorless. There's nothing to it. It's bland. And I'm like, mom, it's, you're just not into rice milk. But now you go to my mom's house. What does she have in her refrigerator? Rice milk. You better believe it. <laughs> and so, you know, th yes, my husband thought I was crazy, my friends, everyone. But the interesting thing is now where the world is moving and where we're going, we're desperate for this information. We want to get more into health and better our health for ourselves and for our children. So we need the information. We want to become aware, but we, we need to be fed it. We need that information fed to us.